It's the end of an era. All that spare change I used to get. Sorry, I spilled Bud Light on you. I wrote a song. <clears throat> Sorry. Here we go. The crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. The Jeff Fisher Show, brought to you by Bud Light, Buffalo Wild Wings, Super Park, and Dobbs Tyrant Auto. Oh, hey, yeah, we're here. hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome in. Talking football. I'm always the last guy to know. There's something wrong with that. Hey, it's a victory Monday. we got a great turnout here at Buffalo Wild Wings and Creve Corps. Jeff Fisher, of course, will be with us. Next segment. But first, how about a warm welcome for Kellen Clemens giving up some of his Monday night. Thank you. Listen to that. Appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you, man. <laughs> picked a Thank good you. week. <laughs> you picked a great week. Yeah. That, was a, that was a great performance. It, um, was, it was a lot of fun. It really was. It, it was looked like fun. it was a lot of fun. It you was. have fun, though. You have fun when you play the game of football. I don't, you don't take anything for granted here, do you? Not, not anymore. I, I, I made that mistake early in my career. Yeah. I really did. And, so it's, and it's rare to have an opportunity to make up for it mm -hmm. and to have an opportunity to play later in your career. And that's one of the things that really has been very important to me this year is to enjoy the moment because in this business and, and you guys know you're here one day and you're gone the next and um, I think if I would have been out of the league early in my career there would have been a lot of regrets that I would have had and fortunately I've had a chance to to maybe right some of those wrongs. No, I think you have. I yeah. think you played very, very well. Come a long way this Bradford, year. Man, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was your favorite part of the ball game yesterday? If you had to put a finger on one play or one aspect of what you guys did. Harkey, come on, <laughs> big fellow, <laughs> big fellow on the sideline. He, he's <laughs> Corey Harkey is a special guy. I, I absolutely love him. He brings so much fire and so much energy. And to see him do that, make that type of a play in that situation, um, that's definitely one of them. Um, I mean, you were talking earlier watching Robert Quinn. Oh my God! My <laughs> goodness! I mean, he's there's no answer for him. There isn't. Um, but I think as a quarterback, one of the things that I love, and this, it, it's kind of selfish, I love handing the ball off to Zach Stacy and watching those five guys up front just road grade. Yeah. And yeah. just, you know, six, seven, eight yards at a time. I love that. You, you guys have found some things here since week four when Jeff mm -hmm. Fisher kind of reinvented what you guys were doing, what you're going to be about. Zach Stacy looks like the real deal. To me, he reminds me of Frank Gore. Same body style, similar, similar yep. uh, running style. But the thing we talked about today is that, you know, the transition for everybody in the NFL is tough. But for a running back, the opportunities at the line of scrimmage look so much different. The holes now look like slivers. And some, yes. some guys have a hard time identifying the opportunities and making the wrong decision. I don't think I can count on one hand since Zach's become the starter in week five how many times we've said he made the wrong decision. He seems to have a very high running back IQ and understand where he needs to be. That's a, that's a great term for it. And one of the things that he's done a great job of is he takes what's there. You know, he's, he doesn't bounce out and then all of a sudden we're sitting second and 13. Right. Because, you know, it, it didn't materialize just right and then he tried to make something happen. And the other thing, if it's not there, because he's so powerful. I mean, right. you know, he's this tall. <laughs> and his legs are so big around. He's so powerful and so strong. If there's not a hole there at the line of scrimmage, we're still sitting at second and eight because he can make one. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, you love calling runs for that guy. Right. Just run full speed into a tree stump. That's what it feels like, right? right? Yeah, little short dude. Um, Austin Pettis uh, continues to be that guy for you, it seems. He, uh, you guys, it seemed like you guys, guys had this mental connection yesterday. Austin is a guy, you mentioned running back IQ. Austin has a football IQ. He gets it. He understands coverages. He understands routes. Um, and he's got a great catching radius. The catch that he made on the left sideline was – there's not a lot of guys that get to it. It wasn't a r really well-thrown ball. We had some heat um, on it. Yeah, that thing it was, was a moving. little bit of heat. Um, but for him to be able to bring that in, that's a strength of his. And, and I have to take a moment if I can. You know, Austin is a guy whose role has kind of diminished a little bit as the season has gone on because some of these young guys are playing really good football. But it speaks to the character of him – and how he has stayed with it. He has not, you don't see an attitude problem at all. And so when Tavon goes down and we say, hey, P, we need you this week. We need you to convert some third downs. I mean, what's he do? He goes out there wow. and he converts third downs. I mean, he's a special type of guy. It seems to me your, your, your personality in the field fits perfectly with Jeff Fisher. You, you try to extend every single play. You scrap and battle to the whistle. Yeah, I used to hate guys like you. Jeff Fisher, 
Jeff, <laughs> stay in the pocket, man. Come on. <laughs> Jeff Fisher uh, is is similar in the way he coaches. Give me your reaction to the onside kick yesterday when you guys were already up fourteen nothing. I loved it. I loved it. You know, when we came off the field after scoring, he kind of grabbed me and said, "Hey, just keep your helmet close. We're going to try for a o- surprise onside." <laughs> so you, you're trying not to watch, but you're trying to watch, um, and that's that's his attitude, and I think that's also his belief um, in our, our in our special teams unit. Um, and obviously they went out and did it, um, which we could have got more than three out of the drive, but a big opportunity for us to keep Drew Brees and that offense right. on the sideline. What does it tell you about yourself? I mean, I, I'm looking at you, and I'm, I'm thinking where we started going back to preseason, not to drag that up, but you just beat the New Orleans Saints, a playoff <laughs> football team. I'm serious. They're I mean, good, the coach he, and the quarterback have records attached to their name. You guys just beat the Saints. That's huge. What does that tell you about this football team? You know, the, the word that was used the other day was resiliency. Um, and I've, I've been on football teams that have been in similar situations. We're not going to the playoffs. And we're all disappointed in that. But you can, you can go one of two ways once you get to that point in the season. And I've been on teams where guys are automatically starting to talk about what they're doing for the New Year's and where they're going in the off season, And they begin to check out. Nobody on this football team has done that. You know, everybody's still all in. Um, you know, we want to go out and win these last two games. That's our focus. That's what everybody is still driving toward. And that's, you know, Coach Fish talked about it Saturday night in the hotel. That's, that's a special group of guys that can do that. I don't know if, I mean, I know you were on great mm-hmm. teams. I don't know if you were on one of those teams. But in this business, that, that happens. And it's not happening in our locker room. So it's, it's a really special environment to still go into work, you know, week 16 when, you know, we know that we've got two games left to play, and that's it. Callan Clemens, our guest. Uh, Jeff Fish will be joining us in the second segment. Uh, we talk about your toughness, the way you play the game. We both, we both love it. We both. Oh. How much is? How much do you go back to your background growing up on a ranch? <laughs> hey, a lot of us played some played football after school. Some of us had chores. Some people watched television. I'd imagine your life growing up was a little tougher and more demanding a than a lot of kids. So maybe give us some insight into what that was like and how that's helped you. A, a lot of success that I've been able to have just in life and on the football field is directly correlated to how I grew up. It, it really is. I mean, work ethic is something that is drilled into you from a very young age. You're, you're up early, you're, you're out late, you're working, you're doing it. Um, from a toughness standpoint, it's just part of it. It's part of life in a small town a lot of times. You got you to brave cold weather. I mean, if you're growing up on a ranch, I mean, I've been I've been run over by cows. I've been bucked off of horses. <laughs> that <laughs> explains it's things. Kind of part of, it's kind of that part explains of it. things. <laughs> wow. It's kind of part of it. Yeah. Well, we, how are you going to scare him? <laughs> that's my <laughs> right. point. That's well, my point. I'm sure you experienced a lot before the age of 16, and most of us probably took till 20, 25, 30. <laughs> there, there's some experiences I could write a book about. Wow. Yeah. I grew up off Ross Avenue here, about okay. a mile and a half away from here. I did not rope a steer. I did not ride a bucking bronc, any of that stuff. Kellen, uh, congratulations on the win. Congratulations on playing great football, filling in for Sam Bradford. And we've said it. We hope you're here for a long time. I I think you've earned earned that right. I appreciate it. Thank Thank you you all for having me. How about a hand for Kellen Clements? Back in a moment on 101 ESPN of the St. Louis Rams Radio Network.